Hello! Wanted to do a quick booktube prize check-in. So for the 2020 prize I signed up to judge both fiction and non-fiction. For round one I am in the fiction round. I am in group C. So I decided I'm gonna do something of a reading vlog as I get through these six titles uh, that I have been assigned to read for this round and I wanted to start with, uh, I already read the list but a bit of a reaction to the titles. I have read none of them so that was, is going to be interesting. The first one is Taya Obrett's book Inland, I now have this on hold at the library. It should be available soon. There were not too many holds on it left at this point since it was released a few months ago. I did not finish Taya Obrett's debut novel, which was The Tiger's Wife. I know a lot of people were really hot on that book when it was published. I was not. And honestly, I don't remember the book. I don't remember what it was that I didn't like about it. So Inland is kind of going to be almost like a fresh start for Taya Obrett and me. So it'll be interesting to try that. The other one is Jeanette Winterson's Frankenstein. This was a book that I was really interested in when I first heard about it. Um, and then I read Jeanette Winterson's book Lighthouse Keeping, and it had been really recommended very hard to me, like solid recommendations. Uh, and I read it, and I thought it was good. But because it had been so hyped, I was kind of let down. So I kind of backburnered Frankenstein a little bit. So it'll be interesting to read another book by Jeanette Winterson uh, and see how I like that, especially since this one is kind of a little bit surreal. Um, <laughs> Guinness came over to say hello. So, um, and then a Toph Room's book, A Woman is No Man. Now, I happened to have this book on hold for Libby, the audiobook. Um, so I should be getting that soon. Uh, I believe in the next three or four weeks. So I have until, it is currently January 27th. And I, uh, yeah, January 27th. And I have until the end of March to read these. So I should get that one in time. And I've been curious about reading it, clearly, since I was already on hold for the audiobook. Uh, and then there is Yi Yoon Lee's book, Where Reasons End. I've heard really good things about Yi Yoon Lee in the last year. I have this on hold at the library as well. Um, Maduri Vijay's The Far Field. I got a copy of this book from Book of the Month Club. Uh, it is on its shelf at the moment, but I, that's going to be an easy one for me to start with since I have it available. Uh, actually, Frankenstein is available on Scribd, not the audio, the ebook version of it. So uh, those are probably going to be the first two books that I managed to read from this field while I wait for the others to become available. Uh, the final book in this group is Ali Smith's book, Spring. Whew. I started winter and I only got about five or 10 pages into it and decided, you know what, I'd, I may revisit this later. I don't want to do it right now. And I never revisited it. So I, heard gr I hear great things about them. I'm not sure it's for me, but it will be interesting to try. So we'll see. So I have Inland, um, Where Reasons End, and Spring on hold at the library. Uh, I've already checked out Jeanette Winterson's Frankenstein on Scribd. I have a copy of The Far Field. Uh, so we should be good to go. And I will check in with you as I get started with some actual reading. So 2020 Book 2 Prize, round one. Let's go. Okay, here's my first update for Book 2 Prize reading. I am outside with Guinness and Jameson. We are out here because uh, cleaning people arrived and Jamie likes to bark at them, don't you, Jamie? Don't you? <laughs> She's like, don't make me talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah, she does not like strange people in her house. Go figure. Guinness just wants to say hello. But anyway, I started The Far Field on audio. I had a little bit of a hard time getting into it. But once I got past the first five minutes, I really started getting into it. I think um, and part of that is actually the narrator. I think she has a really great storytelling voice. So once I got into the first chapter. I was really starting to enjoy it, so I'm eager to see where that goes. Uh, I got a phone call from the library today that Inland by Taya O'Brett is available, so I have to go pick that up, and I have not started Frankenstein yet, which I have um, on uh, ebook. It was available through Scribd, so I am going to try to start that, and we'll see how it goes, And but I'm enjoying it so far. Jamie, are you so upset? Are you so upset? <laughs> okay, it has been a minute, um, but I'm back with some more reading updates for the BookTube Prize. Uh, in case you haven't followed my channel, it, uh, so in the meantime, since the last update I had, um, I had umbilical hernia repair, and while I was recovering from that, I just really did not feel like reading at all. So I did not make any progress in any of the books that I was reading. 
but I'm finally starting to feel like I'm working my way back into the reading world and ready to get in. I have not. So let's kind of go through the, the ones that I'm reading right now and the ones that are coming up and just do a little bit of a catch up on that. So I had been listening to the audio of The Far Field by Madhuri Vijay. I was roughly halfway through by the time I had the hernia repair surgery and I tried to listen to the audio a little bit during recovery and I was having a really hard time paying attention and I didn't think it would be fair to the book to try to like power through that. So I put it to the side and I'm going to start getting back into it now. I am listening to the audio, but I have a copy of the book that I can hold up and <laughs> show you guys. Um, and for this one, I like it. I don't love it. So I have a feeling it's going to kind of end up in the middle of the pack. I think the writing is good. Some of the observations are good. Uh, the dynamic between the protagonist, Shalini, and her mother, I think is really fascinating. But I think the problem I'm having with this book is that it feels very familiar. Like, I have read um, The God of Small Things, I've read The Kite Runner, I've, I've, I've read other books set in the same region that feel like they cover a lot of the same ground that this one does. Uh, I don't think I've talked about the premise of this book. So, uh, Shalini is grieving at the loss of her mother, and she decides to, she is a kind of privileged woman from Bangalore. She travels to Kashmir to find an old family friend of her mother's, the d dynamic, so this is was a, a, an impoverished man from Kashmir, someone who would not have been in her social circle, and the details of that relationship, or friendship between her mother and this man are teased out as the book continues. There's clearly some kind of secret that we're building toward with that, uh, that will result in his separation and return to Kashmir. And um, it's, it's all very interesting. I just, like I said, I just it feels a little bit familiar so far, and I don't know if anything in the last half of the book is going to happen that will make it feel fresher and newer. And it feels weird saying that because I do enjoy. And if you haven't read like The God of Small Things or The Kite Runner or any of those, I think there's definitely merit in this book. I think a lot of how I react to this is going to depend on where it goes in the last half. And like I said, I like it. I'm just not loving it right now. So that is The Far Field by Madhuri Vijay. I got Inland by Taya Obret from the library and I started it yesterday. I am not super far into it. I am about 35 pages into it. I will say though, that's a really good first 35 pages. I'm very into the story. I feel captivated. I like the writing. I did not finish The Tiger's Wife, and I think a lot of that had to do with, there was kind of the flowery description that I didn't like. I don't remember the reasons why I bailed on it very well, but um, this kind of makes me want to go back and give it another try, because I think the writing is very assured, uh, and I know Teo Bread is fairly young still, um, it, but it's it's just it's so good. So in the pr the premise of the book is that there's this man Lurie. He's a former outlaw. The first chapter we hear a lot about his childhood and um, th there's violence. Uh, he hears ghosts who uh, who become kind of attached to him, and then the second chapter switches to the perspective of Nell, I believe is her name. Yeah, Nora, Nora, not Nell, <laughs> um, and her son is convinced that there is some kind of a predator circling their house. And um, you know from the description of the book that at some point Lurie's storyline and Nora's are going to converge. And there's a lot of mis there are a lot of mysterious things going on. I just immediately feel pulled into this book. And I know I'm not very far along, so there's plenty of time for it to go south. But it, it's kind of the opposite of the far field, where the far field... I like, but I don't feel super into. Like, I didn't actually have a hard time putting it down for about <laughs> two weeks um, while I was in recovery. But this one, I feel like I, I actually want to be reading right now, and unfortunately I'm working <laughs> and talking to you. I'm really liking this so far. Of the two that I've, I've read so far, this one looks like it's going to be coming out ahead. But we shall see. Um, I am waiting for my library to get me copies of Spring by Ali Smith. I am also waiting on Where uh, Reasons End by Yi Yun Li. Uh, that should be coming up shortly. I have, hopefully I'm going to finish the audio for The Far Field really soon. And by the time I do, the audio for uh, Woman Is No Man by Atafram will be available. Um, 
through the Libby app. So I can get started on that one. I have Frankenstein on ebook available through Scribd. So once I finish Inland, I want to start on that. So that's where I'm at right now. I am going to, as I work, I have a project I'm going to be working on that should be good for listening. So I'm going to get going on the far field again. And I really am looking forward to getting into further into Inland later today because that's a good beginning. I'm kind of hooked. So it'll be interesting to see if that continues. And I will check in with you again. Okay, it's been about two days. I wanted to check in about the far field. Um, the day I left that last message, I did manage to listen to a chunk of this, get to about uh, a little over 50% in. And then yesterday, uh, last night specifically, I started it again and immediately stopped. So let's check in for a minute. So I was actually thinking to myself as I was halfway through, what is left to happen in this book? There's prob probably going to be some kind of a twist because it feels like I'm at a point where it should be wrapping up. So, you know, we're either going to reveal what the betrayal was between... So, uh, I, I think I mentioned the premise of this book. Basically, Shalini's mother um, had a kind of... It's weird. It's kind of a relationship. More like a friendship with this man named Bashir Ahmad, who was a salesman who would come to their house and visit with them. Um, it's clear there was some kind of a betrayal or something happened. He left, went back to Kashmir. So, Shalini, after the death of her mother, goes to Kashmir and is trying to track him down. At a certain point, she finds out that he has died. And um, where I left off last night was I started listening, and Shalini is in a house. She finds uh, a tapestry that is actually a curtain leading to another room, and she walks in, and Bashir Ahmad is there, alive. And I just immediately stopped, <laughs> because I was thinking... Ugh. So I don't think I'm liking this book, because, like I said, I was even before that happened, I was thinking... How am I only halfway through? What is left to happen in this book? And then this twist comes, and I'm going to listen. I, I, this is for the book two prize, so I'm going to get to the end of the book. But I'm just not quite engaged in anything that's happening. You know, you can't even really call what's going on between Shalini's mother and Bashir Ahmad an affair, really. At least not nothing that has happened so far. He just comes to the house and talks to them. So... I don't really know. It's just, like I said, with the elements of the story that feel familiar and the lack of connection on that plot point, I'm just not feeling this very much. So, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I'm only halfway through. There's half of a book to turn things around. But I think the fact that that twist just made me roll my eyes and not want to listen anymore last night probably says a lot about the direction that this book is going. So that is this uh, in terms of Inland, which I don't have a copy of right here. I have not made it very far in because I haven't had a whole lot of time to sit with a physical book and read. I've also been catching up on work and you know things have been kind of busy with family. So I am looking forward to spending some time with Inland by Taya Obrett this weekend. Uh, the, I got notifications from the library that the holds for Spring by Ali Smith and Where Reasons End by Yi Yoon Lee are in. So I have to go pick those up this weekend, and hopefully I will like them more than I... Hopefully I'll be more engaged in those than I am in this one. I just feel like... You know, the reality is I put this one down when I was recovering from my hernia surgery, and it was kind of easy to put down. So I'm not... I think that says volumes. I'm kind of just not really into this, and I don't know where it's going. So we'll see. Stay tuned. All right, it is Monday now. We've had the whole weekend, and I got some reading done, but I also managed to pick up the two books from the library, so let's talk about them quickly. I was going to film this uh, outside the library yesterday after I picked these up, because right next door to the library is where they're building the new library in Missoula, and it looks really cool, but it was also very rainy and cold yesterday, so I decided not to do that to myself. So let's talk about these, because I did not actually know what Where Reasons End by Yi Yun Lee was about, and it sounds amazing. The narrator of Where Reasons End writes, I had but one delusion, which I held on to with all my willpower. We once gave Nikolai a life of flesh and blood, and I'm doing it over again, this time by words. Yi Yun Li meets life's deepest sorrows as she imagines a conversation between a mother and child in a timeless world. Composed in the months after Li lost the child to suicide, Where Reasons End trespasses into the space between life and death as mother and child talk, free from old images and narratives. Deeply moving, these conversations portray the love and complexity of a relationship. I mean, holy crap, that sounds amazing and sad. Really interested in that. It sounds a little bit like a Miriam Taves book. I love Miriam Taves. Also reminds me of the play Night Mother by Marsha Norman. Don't know if any of you have read that, but it's really good and devastating. 
So I'm very much looking forward to this one. It's also a short book. It's only, let's see. It is only 170 pages. So this one should be easy to get to. Uh, probably not gonna be a happy read, but I'm really looking forward to it. Very interested in that. Uh, I'm less enthusiastic about Spring by Ellie Smith. Now, I think I mentioned I had only gotten about 10, maybe 15 pages into Winter by Ali Smith before I gave up. I just, at the time, was really not in the mood for it, so I said, you know what, I don't want to do this right now. I'll circle back to it. And then I never circled back to it. Um, but so, I don't know. I'm going to try it, but I'm not overly enthusiastic, and the dust jacket copy does nothing to make me feel any different. What unites Catherine Mansfield, Charlie Chaplin, Shakespeare, Rilke, Beethoven, Brexit, the present, the past, the north, the south, the east, the west, a man mourning lost times, a woman trapped in modern times, spring. The Great Connective. With an eye to the migrancy of story over time and riffing on Pericles, one of Shakespeare's most resistant and rollicking works, Ali Smith tells the impossible tale of an impossible time. In a time of walls and lockdown, Smith opens the door. The time we're living in is changing nature. Will it change the nature of story? Hope springs eternal. Now, I know you can't judge the book itself based on the marketing copy, but just, you know, and I love a pun, but ending it with hope springs eternal seems a little, I don't know. Um, and that the time we're living in is changing nature. Will it change the nature of story? I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm going to read it, but I don't know. I'm not feeling optimistic about it. So I'll get to those. The only one I do not have a copy of at the moment is Etaf Rum's A Woman Is No Man, but I have a hold on that that should be available uh, within the next week or so from the Libby app. It will be on audio, and I'm looking forward to that. So let's talk about progress. We'll start with the one I have a physical copy of. That's Inland by Taya Obrett. I am now, let's see, 100 pages into this book. Still really liking it. I just, every time I pick it up, I get totally swept into the story. Um, I just really enjoy it. There's so much about ghosts and, um, which is not usually my thing, but it's done in a way that just keeps drawing me into the story. I have no idea where it will go. I have no idea if it will end as well as I'm enjoying it so far, but I just am really enjoying the act of reading this book so far. And then, uh, I'm feel a little bad that I ragged on the far field as, as much as I did on Friday. There is a reasonable explanation for what happened there. I just generally feel like the plot is so predictable. And I mean, there's still room for it to surprise me. I'm only 65% of the way through it. I can't get past the way it feels so familiar, like a book I've already read. And nothing is really breaking me out of that yet. So we'll see how it wraps up. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more reading on those. Hopefully I will be finished with them by Wednesday and it will be ready to start on Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson and these guys. And hopefully I will be getting A Woman Is No Man on audio very soon. And I will check in with you about those. But in the meantime, I'm going to get back to work and do a little more reading and we'll see how it goes. We've made progress. I, by the way, I just realized that I have not been dating these videos as I edited them into the larger video, and I'm not going to start now, so I uh, just have to go with it. Um, so right now, I am almost done with three of the books on my, that I have been assigned to read for the BookTube Prize. I have about two hours left in the audio of A Woman Is No Man by Etah Rum, here to talk about the ones that I have finished and uh, what I'm thinking of A Woman Is No Man so far and how the rankings are looking as I go into the last three books. So the first one that I finished was The Far Field by Maduri Vijay. As you've seen from the previous videos, I have been on a bit of a roller coaster with this book. The writing is fine, the idea is fine, everything is fine. I just had a really hard time getting into this book and really enjoying it. And I think a lot of that comes down to the characters and a lot of the decisions they make and the way that the story goes and unfolds, I just don't buy it. And that's not the kind of thing you can really force. I just didn't believe, like uh, Shalini, oh, when she's in grief over her mother, she, get, she gets basically fired from her job. She goes to Kashmir to find this old family friend. I kind of get that. But then all of her decisions, once she's there, she meets family, she settles in, she has this love interest that I just didn't get. 
And then, this, this, by the way, is all that stuff that happens in the first half of the book, so it's not really spoilers. And then she, at one point, is offered a job, and she thinks she's going to throw away her whole life and stay there, but you just don't understand why she would want to do that. I mean, you get that she's never really had a place, she's grieving over her mother, but why would she settle in this place with people she doesn't understand, lots of political goings-on and danger, it just doesn't make sense. And then the way the story goes from there, and no, again, no spoilers, I, I just don't really believe any of the actions. And even, it teases out details of this old family friend, Bashir, Bashir Ahmed, and I don't believe that storyline either. It's just, I, I found, I, I think it's, though, especially the characters, I didn't find them credible enough to really follow. And because of that, I kept getting irritated by this book. And I think it's longer than it needs to be. And, um, yeah. And I just couldn't get into it. I, I really struggled to keep picking this one up and keep reading through it. So the way things are standing right now, this is the one that's going to be on the bottom. Will it stay that way? I don't know. Then I finished Inland by Taya Obrett. And this one was a surprise for me. I didn't think I was really going to like it. And I mostly did. So here... Uh, let me explain what it is a little bit more, and then I'll explain the problem. So I think I mentioned before that there are two different storylines. There's Lurie, who is um, an outlaw traveling the West. What I had not really gotten into before was that Lurie ties into this um, actual historical detail that Teo Brett weaves into the novel, which is that uh, in the 1850s, the U.S. Army uh, conscripted camels and cameliers uh, and who traveled the West. And Luri meets up with a couple of Turkish people who are involved in that. And he become, he gets his own camel, he travels. And uh, a lot of people haven't seen camels in the West, so there's always a lot of surprise. And it's funny how even though the camels seem better adapted to the West, they don't drink a lot of water, they can withstand heat, they can carry a lot of weight. People really cling to the idea of horses. Um, but I feel like Tay Obrett never really does much with that angle. She gets it. <laughs> She gets at the fact that they, the camels are actually very suited to the West, but she doesn't really interrogate that they could have been better or more suited than the, what people were already using. And I thought that was interesting. The problem is, I just don't think that storyline is super interesting. Every time it came back to Lurie, I found myself dragging. And when it got back to Nora, I'd pick up my pace and really be excited to read. And that continued through the entire book. What's interesting is that, so Luri, as I mentioned, uh, sees ghosts. What I, I don't think I had mentioned that if a ghost touches him, he feels its wants, and the wants of that ghost sort of possess him. So as the book goes on, he starts avoiding ghosts because he doesn't want to carry their wants with him. And But it was always Nora's storyline that was selling me, which is interesting because, you know, theoretically, the one with the camels in the Wild West should have been much more interesting and yet I didn't think it was and I think that comes down to the character of Luri and his storyline Nora was just a very compelling character to me her husband is gone off to search water she's desperate she doesn't have water her sons are gone she's left with her son who was too young to really understand and uh, a niece who, or a cousin of her husband's who believes that she can hear dead people so there's a difference between Luri sees dead people but Josie can speak to them. She doesn't see them, but she can communicate with them. And obviously you know that these storylines are going to connect in some way because that's just the way fiction works, but also it says it in the dust jacket in the beginning. Um, it's just always was Nora's storyline that I really liked. every time. And I, I really like, I don't like books that tease you that you're missing pieces of a story and then we'll fill them in along the way. Something about the way Taya Obrett does that really appeals to me. Because she doesn't tease you. She'll mention something. And you'll kind of think to yourself, I don't understand what the connection is. And then she'll come back to it later and expand. And you'll be like, oh, okay. But the way she does it is really cool. I feel like the storyline with Luri had some of the problematic bits that I didn't like about the Tiger's Wife and why I DNF'd it. And as I was reading this, it kind of reminded me of them. I feel like the Tiger's Wife was very caught up in its own cleverness in a way, I hope that makes sense. It was really impressed with its own idea and kept going into it. And I think uh, Taya Obrett is really into the idea of telling the story about the camels traveling the West and this man who can see ghosts uh, and who literally haunt him. 
and it just goes a little bit too far into itself and I, a little too far into its quirks and I, I found Nora's more straightforward story much more compelling. However, this is the one that's on top in my rankings so far, mostly because of that Nora storyline and because I really appreciate Nora Tay Obrett's writing in that section. And um, we'll see how that goes. I, like I said, I am two hours away from finishing A Woman Is No Man. I'm going to do it today. And I like the story. I think there's a lot of really compelling detail in it. So basically, it is the story of... It is told through three women in a Muslim family living in America. Um, Isra was married to uh, Adam, who has been in America, and she comes over to America with him. They live in Brooklyn. It's her story of becoming a wife and a mother, and you know, the family wants her to have sons. She fails to have sons. She has a couple of daughters instead. And it's about a woman's place in society, but in this religion in particular, and the expectations that it creates, and also the expectations it creates on and for men, which is interesting. I just always feel like the structure is overly complicated, and you know that it's building to a twist. I mean, I don't know that for sure. I haven't finished it. But I feel like it's building toward a twist, and it just feels overly complicated in the structure, and I just I feel like I'm always wanting more. The characters kind of feel, they're, as the book goes on, they get fleshed out. But in the beginning, I had a really hard time getting situated with them and getting attached to them. They seem kind of, seemed kind of superficial. They mostly seem appealing because of their circumstance, though. And I don't know if that's my reaction to reading this as a man or if it's genuinely something with Atafram's writing. So I, I appreciate a lot of the details about it. But I'm kind of struggling as well. So right now my ranking is Inland at number one, A Woman at No Man at number two, and The Far Field at number three. Coming up, I have Where Reasons End by Yu Yoon Lee, which I am planning to... I, I think I'm going to try to start this one first because it's short and I was really interested in the description of it. Uh, I have to start Frankenstein on ebook, And then there's Spring by Ali Smith. I am predicting that Where Reasons End could potentially supplant Inland because there are some... There are enough problems that I have with Inland that something could certainly surpass it. Um, possibly Frankenstein, but I think Where Reasons End is the one that's more likely to do so. And we'll see how that works out. Uh, I had mentioned that I started an Allie Smith book. I'm not sure she's going to be a writer who is for me, but I'm, willing, I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Um, I think it would probably still come out ahead of The Far Field. But we'll see how that works out as well. So that's where I'm at. That's how the rankings are standing right now. And we'll see what happens next. A lot has happened since the last time I checked in. Obviously, COVID-19 spread throughout the world and became a pandemic and changed everything. Like, bookstores are closed. I hope you're doing what you can to support them. Uh, stores, yeah. just It's a very different world from the last time I checked in. So it's weird going back and watching the first half. And... Because of everything going on, my reading was kind of interrupted. I was very slow to get through the last books that I had to read for the Book 2 Prize and kind of struggled with reading, not necessarily with the books themselves. Um, just you know, reading was difficult, concentrating was difficult, so I ended up coming kind of down to the wire and getting the last book in the day before judging was due. Uh, and it's funny, I, I was not, because of everything going on, I did not do reading check-ins for the vlog, so everything is going to be very top-heavy. There are a lot of check-ins for the books that happened earlier, and there are just wrap-ups on the ones that happened later. But, you know, it's, it is it, it is what it is, because the, the world changed halfway through the vlog. So here's where I came out on the last books in the series. First, let's talk about Where Reasons End by Yi Yun Lee. You, uh, obviously, you've been watching this video. You know I was looking forward to this. I thought this might have potential to be one of my favorites. What I had not considered was that I really don't like novels as therapy, and this is exactly that. Like, if you're familiar with Sheila Hedy's book Motherhood, in which the main character, who is a very thinly veiled stand-in for Sheila Hedy herself, basically spent the entire book debating whether or not she should become a mother. And throughout the book, she uses this narrative trick where she flips a coin. It's like an I Ching, I Ching method of asking yes or no questions and getting an answer. And she lets the I Ching method completely rule her life and make decisions for her. And I hated that book. And this is a lot of that. I'm sure writing this book was extremely therapeutic for Yi Yun Lee. I'm sure it would be very therapeutic for people who are in similar situations where they have a child who um, committed suicide. 
but the act of reading someone's philosophical ponderings is not very great for me. So I ended up really not liking this book at all. I did not get along with it. Um, and just for an example, I marked a page where I can show you what the dialogue of this book is like, because a lot of it is an imagined conversation between the mother and her child who has committed suicide. Does everyone have to have some delusion to live, he asked. Does one have to have some delusion so as to be willing to die, I thought. That's a, there's a fundamental difference, he said. You only die once. So that's the end of the delusion? Not in the sense that it disappears, he said. No, you still have it, only it's no longer delusion, but reality. Is it not the case with the living? You treat the delusion as reality? You don't meet your delusions when you're alive. Like somewhere over the rainbow, I said. And this is the whole book. And I, to me, it was just painful. I can see where somebody might like this. I can see where it might be beneficial to someone. Like I said, it could probably be therapeutic if you have been through some, a similar sort of situation. For me, I hated it and could not get along with it. Thankfully, it is a short book. But yeah, that's where I came out on Where Reasons End, but Yi Yun Lee. And then there was Spring by Ali Smith. And I, this one I really, 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 really struggled with. Now, what I had not really considered when I got my Book Two Prize um, assignment was that three of the books are very experimental. Uh, Where Reasons End, obviously, because it is basically a philosophical conversation uh, by an author whose child committed suicide about a mother whose child committed suicide. Um, Spring, Ali Smith's seasonal quartet is very experimental. And Frankenstein, which I will get to in a minute, by Jeanette Winterson, they're all experimental books. I tend not to get along with experimental books. I think part of this is similar to how I don't really get along with poetry very well traditionally because I feel like I don't understand it. It makes me feel like I'm an, I'm an idiot and I get angry. So the, that frustration did not come out so much with Where Reasons End, but with Where Reasons End, it was much more the, the style and the structure of the book that I didn't like. But I definitely struggled with that when I got to Spring by Ali Smith. And I was really having a hard time getting through it, but I didn't want to give up. So I found it on audio on Scribd and started listening to that instead. And that is the only reason I was able to, fit, to finish the book because having someone read it to me made it a little bit more rhythmic and I was kind of able to get, get into it and get through it. But it also made me realize something else. Like the way the book opens, it sounds to me like beat poetry, which is not something I'm into, but I couldn't get that out of my head. And even though the beginning is the only part that's really worded this way or structured this way, throughout the book, I could not get it out of my head. So here's the beginning. Now, what we don't want is facts. What we want is bewilderment. What we want is repetition. What we want is repetition. What we want is people in power saying the truth is not the truth. What we want is elected members of parliament saying knife getting heated, stuck in her front and twisted, things like bring your own noose. We want governing members of par parliament in the House of Commons shouting kill yourself at the opposition. Members of parliament, we want powerful people saying they want other powerful people chopped up in my bags and my freezer. And it goes on and on and on like that. And it wasn't until I started listening to the audiobook that I was like, you know, put a pair of bongos to this and it, sound, it sounds exactly like a beat poet, <laughs> which sounds condescending. And it, it kind of is, in a way. So I think Ali Smith's writing is beautiful. And through the audio, I was able to appreciate that. I just could not, and I think part of it is also my brain power and the stress and anxiety of everything going on right now. I just could not really deal with the writing itself. I had to listen to somebody read it to me. And her writing is beautiful, but the book itself was really inaccessible to me. Even now, I don't really quite know what to think of it. If you ask me to explain what it's about, honestly, I really can't tell you. I think that's probably my failing more than it is Ali Smith's. So I, I, I continue to struggle with this book because it's like, do I not understand it? Is there more to it than what I'm picking up? And the answer is probably. But then I also wonder, like, well, is that experience still valid? Because if I don't get it, I'm sure there are a lot of other people out there who don't get it as well. So I had no idea where to put this book in the ranking. Um, whereas it was very clear where where Reasons End was going to be at the end. So I, I, I put the... When I finished this one, I moved on to Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. And I don't have a copy I can show you because I read the ebook of it on script. And I've read one book by Jeanette Winterson. It was Lighthouse Keeping. I read it last year. And I really liked half of Frankenstein. So basically, part of the book is about Mary Shelley writing Frankenstein. And uh, the other part is about a transgender um, scientist, journalist, 
who is reporting on AI. So basically Frankenstein itself is being mod modernized with AI instead of like a literal body coming back to life. And that part is interesting. However, I hate that part of the storyline. It is, I think, way too infatuated with, the, with its own cleverness. It's like too cute by half a lot. Just to me, it's trying very hard and it shows the effort but the Mary Shelley part is gorgeous. Uh, there are, I, I, I screenshot a lot of passages from that part and I can't, <laughs> I can't read them to you because they're on my phone, which I'm using to film right now. So that's a bit of a failing on my part. However, uh, it's just, it was really beautiful. So I was kind of struggling with this book because just like Inland, I liked half of the book and didn't like the other half. However, with Inland, it's not as severe. Because Frankenstein, I really didn't like the other half of the book. With Inland, it was just kind of more like a meh kind of reaction. So I think I was able to get past it a little bit more. So while I really liked the part about Mary Shelley, and I thought the part, so much about the parts um, of her getting, especially in the beginning when she was getting inspired to write Frankenstein, I thought it was all fascinating and really showed how someone could run into questions throughout their life and or through, over a period of time and then suddenly like a lightning bolt come up, come up with an idea that distills them all. I thought those parts of the book were absolutely beautiful, but I was left with a conundrum then because I, so I had finished all of my books. I knew my top two and the order that they would be in, but I didn't know the order for three and four. I knew the two books that would be in that, in the middle, but didn't know where I was going to put them. And I knew the two bottom books, but hadn't figured out where I was going to put them. So let's start with my, let's do this ranking, not count down. Let's start at the top and go down to the bottom and go through the reasonings for all of them. So I knew my number one book was going to be Inland by Taya Obright, which surprises me because uh, I had not liked The Tiger's Wife when I read it, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And as I said, I only really liked half of the book. But the part of it that I liked, I really enjoyed, and I thought it had some clever things. I wouldn't say I loved this book. I think that's the disappointing thing. There's no book that I loved or that I could really heartily recommend to somebody, but it is what it is. And um, I think the Inland is a, certainly a good book. I think it's worthy of a number one spot. So that's kind of what I'm going with. A Woman is No Man is uh, my clear second place title, uh, and a, a part of me wonders, I did stop and think a little bit about maybe that should be my number one, but I always felt at a remove from A Woman is No Man in a way that I didn't with the part of Inland that I liked. And because of that, I feel like I had to give the edge to Inland instead of A Woman is No Man. Um, I, I still struggle with the idea of whether or not I'm being unfair to a woman as no man, but I think this makes sense, this order, to me at least. So then the question was three and four, and my three and four were Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson and Spring by Alice Smith. And part of why I was really struggling with where they should go in the order was that I still don't quite, I can't quite wrap my head around Spring. So, and I think it's really well written I think somebody who's much more attuned with what it's putting out there will probably enjoy it, but it's just not for me. And then there's the fact that I only liked half of Frankenstein, and the part that I didn't like, I really didn't like. So what does that mean? Does that mean it should get number four, or this should get number three? I'm not really excited about either one of them, to be honest. To be honest. But what it came down to for me was that, again, kind of like with Inland, the parts of Frankenstein that I liked were extremely well written. I thought they were very smart. My coffee maker's turning off, so <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so I, the parts that I liked about Frankenstein were great, and I would recommend them. So that was the difference for me. Frankenstein got third place, Spring got fourth place. And then we go to the bottom two. And <laughs> you saw all about my reactions to The Far Field by Maduri Vijay, and uh, I just explained why I had problems with Where Reasons End. I really didn't enjoy both of them, but ultimately what I came down on was that there were parts of the far field that I did enjoy, and the writing itself is not bad. I think it's the plotting and the structure that really makes it fall apart for me. Whereas Where Reasons End, as slim as it is, was kind of annoying to me all throughout. So that ultimately made the difference. The far Field by Maduri Vijay gets fourth place, Where Reasons End by Yi Yun Lee gets Six, uh, this gets fifth place, and this one gets sixth place and forms the bottom of my ranking. So that is how I made my decision for all of these books. 
if you disagree about any of these, please tell me why I should love spring, <laughs> because I just can't figure out what to do with it right now. Uh, it's just not a me book. So, um, yeah, let me know what you thought about them. If you would rank them differently, I would love to hear what your ranking of these six titles would be. And I, at the time I'm filming this, I don't know what the, uh, which books will advance to the next round. I believe the top three in my group advance to the next round. So it'll be, it, it will be interesting to see if the people in my group have different reactions to these books than I did and which ones advance. So I'd love to hear your rankings of the six and what you think of them. I can't wait to see what advances to the next round. That's it for this vlog and this round of the Booktube Prize for me, and I am looking forward to seeing what happens. If you have watched this far, thank you for your time. As always, it is really appreciated. I appreciate you hanging in with some of my ramblings from <laughs> earlier entries, and uh, I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.